morning and welcome to daytime. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to step inside a video game? We are going to be taking a look at the one of the most advanced laser tag systems in the world, and it's right here in Winnipeg. It's brand new, well, pretty brand new anyway, Dark Zone Technologies. Uh, it's where you can go and actually uh, become part of a laser tag team. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. And you're going to meet uh, the woman in charge of this operation a little later on. First of all, we're going to be talking to uh, three gentlemen who are involved in the upcoming play which will be staged at PTE Prairie Theatre Exchange called uh, Talk Radio. You may have seen the film. It was disturbing, it was humorous, it was intense. And the play is all these and more. We're going to be right back with the director and the stars of Talk Radio. Welcome back. Well, coming up very soon, uh, January 14th through to the 22nd, you will be able to see the play Talk Radio. It's going to be staged at Prairie Theatre Exchange in downtown Winnipeg, and it is sort of a joint production involving uh, Q94 FM and GD Productions. Now, this is the second run of this play. It did so well the first time that the producers have decided to put it on again. And you're going to meet right now the people who are involved in this, the director and uh, two of its stars. I'd like to introduce you to Paul Olinick, the director and co-producer as well Kelly Parker who is a well-known Winnipeg radio personality and he in fact uh, plays the lead in this who is also a radio personality and Kirby Russell who is an actor has been doing a lot of theater around Winnipeg and Manitoba over the last few years uh, I want to ask you first of all um, we saw a lot of a lot of people saw the movie and uh, as I mentioned before it's a distressing rather disturbing film the play is different you say Paul tell us a little bit about the play the play's a lot lighter, and uh, they added quite a few subplots to the movie. Um, the play takes place just right in the studio, and it's, 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 I guess it's during regular course of a talk show, real time, radio time, in a station. So, I mean, it's the commercials running underneath it, so it's exactly how a radio station would operate. And in the movie, it's a lot darker, and uh, they, they based it on not only the play, the original play that was done at the uh, New York Shakespeare Festival as a side venue, but as, as well uh, the life and death of Ellen Berg, an actual uh, talk show host out of Denver who was shot down. And okay, for those people who did not see the movie, give right. us sort of a thumbnail sketch as to what it's all about. Okay, Without giving well, <laughs> away the plot, obviously. <laughs> all right, well, it's, it, it's basically, it's, a, it's about an abrasive talk show host who, uh, who, who's been, uh, he, he started off in Akron, a small town, as you know, uh, doing the regular DJ things, cutting people off and things like that, just as a hoot. And now he basically gets too involved. He actually believes he is this character that he he is on the radio, and uh, you know, and everybody else that he works with has seen the change in him, and he's not the same person he used to be. And he doesn't know how to deal with it now, you know, because he deals with these issues very seriously, and everybody else around him seems to just think it's just a show. So, okay, Kelly, you play this big mouth, abrasive, abrasive person. Is this a hard role for you to get yeah, into? It's typecasting, I tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> big mouth. Um, <laughs> you know what? It's. Uh, I think. I. Th I think the way I like to think about it uh, is that every every one of us has this darker side. Mm -hmm. we, we all have you know a certain amount of pent up anger, and and we you know sit and read the paper and uh, watch the news and. Uh, get upset about things that are happening around the world and and that's what this guy brings into the studio every night and uh, he just takes it right over the top and just goes completely crazy with it literally and uh, and uh, I, I think that's the way I like to think of it so it's kind of simmering under the service of everybody of everybody and, and I would imagine with with I mean every play is a bit overblown every story has got to be a little bit overblown to make it bigger than life I suppose in some ways how close is it to reality from things you've observed in radio yourself um, well thankfully I haven't observed a lot of what happens uh, in the play in radio well partly because I do music radio and this is talk radio and so mm -hmm. just the issues involved and the style of radio so I haven't seen too much of it but just from uh, things that I've heard uh, in talk radio and, and uh, things like that. It's, there are parts of it that are very reality based and some parts that are, I guess it's just the structure of the play. You know, he's got a few mm -hmm. comical things that uh, maybe are a little farther out, uh, out there than you would normally hear, but uh, it's actually 
frighteningly close, I guess, Paul. It's actually frighteningly close to a lot of the things we would hear. Hmm. Right. Scary. What, okay, Kirby, what are you playing this? Uh, what, what is your role? Uh, I'm, I'm Kelly's boss. I uh, run the radio station, or so I like, to th like Kelly to think. But uh, my character's name is Dan Woodruff. And he's kind of a business person that cares about the money and all that uh, aspects of it. And he really doesn't care about the people, his, his people, he just, as long as it's making money. And uh, that's kind of where these two get off on that. Yeah. The first play, the first run, I understand, it did very, very well. And I, I heard through the grapevine that Sold it was... Sold out, yeah. the, the, the click, you just clicked. I mean, the, the characters in the play, the direction, everything seemed to work really well. Could you tell right away, the two of you, could you tell right away that it clicked with you? Um... I think we were just far too stressed out last time. Really? <laughs> to, uh, to realize that. I yeah. think uh, the circumstances, uh, the way we all came together and the rehearsal process last time, uh, just the way it all happened, uh, I think literally we were all just too stressed out to, to really stop and think about that kind of thing. I'm, I'm really glad to hear you say that. Uh, but I don't even think I don't think we had time to think about it. Yeah. You know, we all get along and everything, and we, uh, you know, I. Sure, Kelly. You know, <laughs> basically, well, me and Kelly basically saw the main character. Uh -huh. We were pretty well, 99 percent the same way. So that I think was, might have been was, key. Yeah. It really helped out quite a bit because we interpreted the character the same way, and this way there was a little bit, a little bit of discrepancies, but not too many. You know. Do you, do you so. like your character, Kelly? Uh, you. Uh, I heard somebody say really recently in a. Uh, in some interviews show that you always have to like your character in some way. Vincent Price, re on an interview show the other night, uh, you always have to, Vincent he was talking Price. about the villains that he's played and you yeah. always have to, uh, uh, he, he said as a matter of fact, I'm, this is just coming to me now, he was saying that he liked his uh, villains because he played them all as victims, they all saw themselves as put upon in some way and they were just reacting to that. And I suppose uh, that that's in a way the way uh, Barry thinks, he, he is he feels put upon by the f fact that people don't put him on the pedestal he feels he should be on and and he feels put upon by just what happens in the world around him to all of us and and maybe that's why he lashes out so much we should pursue that actually in yes. rehearsal shouldn't we <laughs> <laughs> this is just right. yeah but uh, you have to you have to like him in a way and i think uh, maybe more i feel a little bit sorry for a little for him sorry for the guy he is yeah. pretty messed up yeah. he's pretty messed up now you you're in this not only because uh, you're 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 career seems to fit the role you're playing, but because you uh, you have quite a liking for theater, you in fact did, have done a fair amount of theater in the past. Um, I guess now it's come up to the point of a fair amount. I did a lot of actually uh, film and TV and mm -hmm. that sort of thing as a kid, and uh, then I th the theater actually didn't come uh, about until I decided to pursue it maybe as a career. And at that point I went out to Quebec to a theater school out there. Uh, university out there and uh, studied it for three years and during the course of that I did a lot of stage work but uh, that was really the only stage I'd done six seven plays out there and the last thing I'd done was about 85 or 86 until Paul called me last year mm -hmm. and we did this so yeah you uh, actually just before we started doing this show today I I, I heard uh, I, I heard Kelly say I found out how hard it is to make a living in theater so I decided to get a day job uh, Kirby do you find that uh, you know what he's saying is true I mean it's really really tough to slog it out yeah like anybody who's doing theater anybody I know any always would say that uh, you got to have a day job or, or work during the summer or whatever to accommodate your passions I guess like myself I work during the summer and then I do a lot of stuff during the winter and that mm -hmm. but uh, yeah you're, you're definitely right about that at least in my case yeah do you, do you like your character I was just asking Kelly about his how do you feel about the character you play it's interesting you'd ask that my my when my wife saw the she saw the play she said yeah, you're quite a bit like that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Say, no, wait a minute. <laughs> Whoa, right. It's probably why, uh, why Paul chose me for the part. No, I don't know. It's uh, quite a bit like what? <laughs> well, he's he's all kind of business, and uh, uh -huh. I, well, I suppose I'm a little bit like that. But I care about my people, you know. Like, mm -hmm. sure, we can't say we can't talk about it now. <laughs> yeah, right right. Right. <laughs> you know, the critics have said some interesting things about uh, talk radio. One of them is uh, a, a critic said the call-in show is a metaphor for America's lost souls. It's sort of a fringe part of the world. It's, it's kind of scary, I, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of people who have nothing but that radio, mm -hmm. right? And there are a lot of people who can't do any communicating with anybody, except that radio that doesn't answer back to them. It's That's entertainment to them, you know. It's, exactly. It really is, you know. Uh, 
it, you know, it could be a, a traumatic situation, but, you know, it's still entertainment to them. gives them something to talk about with their but, friends. But isn't it more than that? I mean, I think you're just getting to that, Kelly. It's, it's more than just entertainment to some people. It's their life. Right. To some people, it's their life, right. and that's exactly. what's scary. Right. Barry, in fact, yeah. at one point, Barry says, um, your, your own lives have become your entertainment, and he also says at one point, uh, you're happiest when others are in pain. Mm. And uh, I think, uh, I just look at the TV shows we have, look at... Uh, just the news, you know, the business mm -hmm. of news, and look at the ratings. Uh, some of these uh, breaking stories, you know, mm -hmm. you watch CNN and the Gulf War and any one of these things. Look at the ratings. These the ratings get. wars. I mean, sure, television sure. is accused of this. Radio is accused of, of sensationalizing and uh, right. going Everything. after the viewer in any way they possibly can right. to make sure they have them. Sure. It's quite ruthless, isn't it? Sure. Well, look at uh, any one of the uh, tabloid journalism shows. The talk, the uh, the hard those. copies, mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. all of those things. Hey, those are great shows. And more people watch. are watching them more than ever now. You know, whether it be Howard Stern on the radio mm -hmm. or all these talk shows. Like, I mean, there's more and more they seem to be do you feel the, Do you feel the weight <laughs> of this, Kelly, as a radio person? Do you, you say that, that radio is a very intimate medium where people can, do relate to you, perhaps in a more intimate way than they would if you were on television. Do you feel the weight of this sometimes? I mean, do you feel responsibility for people who, who are sort of, as you say, lost souls? I, uh, I like to think that... Uh, uh, actually, no. To be honest with you, I don't really think about it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, my audience... Uh, I think in radio you, you get a picture in your mind because there's the, the marketing and the targeting aspects of it and who your audience is. You have to be very, you have to know exactly who your audience is and the picture I've got in my mind is, uh, is uh, not that type of person or not a person whose lifestyle is quite that. Paul, just quickly before we go, I want you to just give me an idea of what you want people to walk away from after seeing your play. I want them to, uh, I want them to think about all the talk shows out there right now and how people look at them, you know, whether they be entertainment or their lives or things like that, and realize, you know, that, uh, you know, it, it is, you know, some of these issues are very serious. And, uh, you know, and they're not just entertainment. That's exactly it. Okay. I want to thank you all for being here today. And uh, good luck. Break a leg. <laughs> Coming up, uh, I, I'm going to be introducing you to another very interesting guest, but summing up this very quickly, PTE, January 14th to the 22nd. And tickets are available at PTE? At all Ticketmaster outlets. All Ticketmaster outlets. outlets. There you go. Coming up next, what would it be like to actually step into a video game? I'll be right back with the president of Dark Zone Technologies. Ringing. Got the rest. You're kidding. The phones are ringing off the hook right now. Don't say free stuff till later. People phone before you're on just because I say free stuff before yeah. the break. Yeah, those are, thank you. Once again, another two phone calls. Not knowing that they won't get anything if they phone before you say. Very good. Jen, what else is up tonight? <laughs> well, it is almost time to talk radio once again with the very abrasive uh, Barry Champlain, played by the very congenial uh, Kelly Parker of Q94FM. Now, tonight, a look behind the scenes of this play with four characters on the stage and about 15 off the set. Uh, things can get very crazy, especially during a rehearsal. Uh, Henry, you're on. Yeah, hello, Barry. Yeah. Calling from Wheeling. Hey, long distance. How's the weather out there? Good, good. Uh, I want to talk about that nuclear power plant over in the river. It's yeah, about a brace of talk show host who uh, cuts off many of his callers and uh, believes he's doing more than it actually is. It's just a show, and everybody else around him realizes it's just a show, but he believes he's doing something more, that he's actually straightening out the world. We, the members of the Life and Liberty Alliance, protest the building, sale, okay, okay. or right, manufacture Henry, of nuclear Henry, and nuclear back up a second, Henry, okay? For any Henry, purpose, whether Henry, for armaments sh or Shut up for a second. Are you reading that? Do, is he reading that? the life of millions of people. Shut up for a second, Henry. Are you reading that? Uh, that is our manifesto. I do not care if it is the Magna Carta. You do not read anything on the air on this show. Now, you got something to say. You say it, or you're off. The hardest thing was to be able to coordinate the callers between the actual stage and where they are situated, and we did that by having actual telephones wired into our soundboard and controlled by the uh, table, by, the, by Kelly. Henry! You had your say, now give me mine, okay? I'm not finished. 
You are nothing but a spoiled, spineless little baby. You just want to go running off to mommy and tell her, tell her what a nasty world this is, and she'll just fix it and make it all better. Why don't you just put out that marijuana joint you're smoking, pal, and face the facts? Kelly does a great job. Well, Talk Radio opens up Thursday night at the Studio Theater at Prairie Theater Exchange. Well, on to the music scene. One will show you why, uh, but first, Talk Radio in Winnipeg. Must be, must be driven by some morbid curiosity. Some dark force compels me to listen to this garbage. <laughs> yeah, she's... When Riker joins forces with his stuff, but entertainment's in good hands, we've told you about talk radio, the theatrical version. Tonight, Pulse News videographer Derek Horn was back behind the scenes with Kelly Parker, a man who really lives his parts. Can you believe this? What am I even talking to this guy for? Must be, must be driven by some morbid curiosity, some dark force compels me to listen to this garbage. Yeah, she's breathing, I think. It's hard to tell. There's some, like, foam coming out of her mouth. What? There's foam coming out of her mouth. Come on, Kent. I've had enough of this baloney, okay? You and I both know you're lying. I'm cutting you off. Get off my show. No. What I'm doing in talk radio is the acting part. I'm just being completely myself on Q94 FM. And I think, just way in the back of my mind, I, I worry sometimes that people might sort of blur that line because that's the most frequently asked question uh, when people find out I'm doing this. You know, how close is that to you? And uh, how much of you is going into that role? And thankfully... There's, uh, gee, I hope there's not a whole lot of me and Barry Champlain. I really do. Could I come down and meet you? I'm on the air, Kent. Oh, please! <sighs> uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Kent. Come on down. Oh. Yeah, I'd love to meet you. Oh, really, really great. Yeah, but uh, hurry up, okay, because we're already halfway through the show. Oh, wait, wait, oh, I'll be right down. It's really a lot of fun to get out here and uh, and pretend and just uh, get out here and rock and roll as it were doing the radio thing there are so many other different aspects to it I've always loved music so I, I like playing the tunes I like uh, uh, the interaction with the audience over the airwaves and I like some of the other things that are involved the uh, the concerts some of the interviews I get to do in radio so they're, they're so totally different that uh, that I, I'd have to say putting the security aside I'd like to I'd say that I like them both about the same they're both a blast. Dan, you you got to think of these things because you're the producer. Hey, whatever happened to uh, Richard Speck and the nurses? Oh, no, no, Wayne, Wayne Williams. We bring him up from Atlanta. Listen, Dan, I got to take a piss, okay? I got to go. Oh, no. Whatever happened to that postman from Oklahoma? The guy shot 14 people. Oh, no, Dan, he killed his boss. That's it. We bring him on and we bring you on as a special guest. That's it. That's what we're going to do. Talk Radio runs between January 14th and 22nd here at the Colin Jackson Studio Theatre. Tickets are about nine bucks at the door for the evening show. Derek Horn, Pulse News.